while we're still talking about scholarships, Kevin, I think it would be unfair if I let you go before answering this question. Um, some some people might have joined this call because of the AFOX Mastercard scholarships that my yeah. team will be talking yeah. about later on. Yeah. And as someone who sits on the selection panel, um, maybe could you speak about what the what the team looks for when they are yeah. shortlisting for masters uh, fellows for the program? Yeah. I will. I'm not sure whether my answer will satisfy you or whether, <laughs> okay. it, will, or whether, it, will, whether it will slightly <laughs> horrify you. Um, okay. People often ask us, how do you apply? Well, firstly, you don't apply for it. Every African scholar who is accepted onto a master's course in Oxford automatically, if they want to be, becomes eligible to, for consideration. So firstly, there's no application. And then people often ask us, so as you are doing, so you know, what are the what what are the what are the questions going to be? And and, so, and I always feel I want to say to people, look, every scholar we would want to support. So it isn't that there is a group of people who have got the qualities that we're looking for and some who haven't. If we could, we will want to support every African scholar in Oxford. Um, but because we are, you know, we've now got 70 a year, but that's still not enough. There has to be some sort of process. So the process is we do talk to everyone. Um, and what are we looking for? We're looking for commitment. We're looking for enthusiasm, um, sort of energy about Africa's future. But having said that, if we don't award somebody one, it doesn't mean we don't think they had that. The truth is we could award the scholarships 10 times over. And uh, so, you know, so when I said you won't like my answer, the bit of my answer <laughs> you won't like is that in the end, there's yeah. a lot of luck in it. We could we could award it to hundreds of people and we yeah. do our best and we yeah. look for all those qualities. But yeah. not getting one doesn't mean you don't have those qualities at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there is an element of just luck in it luck. as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, Kevin. I think it's important for for people to understand that that at times you know you don't get the opportunity it doesn't mean that you don't qualify for them. It's just that I you think know. It, well, yeah. I think that's really important. I think that's really important yeah. because I think the worst thing is to feel oh I failed at this when yeah. people don't fail. I say every, we could give every single scholar one. They did all deserve one. Uh, so I think it's really important that we don't have that sense. And similarly. I think it's really important we don't have a sense that, you know, AFOX is for AFOX scholars. AFOX is for all um, African scholars in Oxford. Doesn't matter, yeah. you know, where, where you're funded from, doesn't matter if you're funded from another source or from your own funds or whatever, whatever. So we don't want to make it kind of, you know, restricted to yeah. Af the AFOX community. People, yeah. The whole community for us is, is the AFOX community. AFOX. Uh, we'll jump on to the next speaker who is. Uh, Mantate, a very amazing human being that I have been privileged to also meet through the AFOX Mastercard uh, Scholarship. Uh, she is Zimbabwean. She's a creative entrepreneur with expertise in program management and communications. She's currently a Camry visiting researcher at the University of Westminster in London and has recently earned her Master's in African Studies from the University of Oxford. Uh, she's the founder of um, um, sorry, Mantashi, you have to forgive me for this. I don't know how to pronounce this, but she's the founder of Umoto, a dynamic creative venture, and also provides consulting services to organizations. And this include the Oxford University Innovation, the Southern Africa Human, Re Human Rights Defenders Network, Needs Bridge Strategy Group, and Econet Wireless Zimbabwe. She's also passionate about fashion, travel, and connecting with new people. And she brings a diverse and innovative perspective to every space she engages with. And I concur absolutely with everything that she has said here. She is a very like a multi-talented human being. And if you meet her, you just love her. So yeah, welcome, Mantate. Um, I don't think I can see your video on. Uh, I hope um, you still this. Can you hear me though? Yes, I can hear you. Um... My video is on. Can you now see me? Yeah, yeah, I can see you now. That's perfect. Thank you, Ruth. 
Uh, and thank you, Kevin. That was great. I know I'm not a scientist, but I'm like, after this, I might just continue, <laughs> consider that. But yeah, it's good to see um, Kevin. I love his journey. He's one of the most you know, amazing people that I've gotten to meet here in Oxford. And I know that you asked me to talk a lot about the Mastercard Foundation Africa Oxford Scholarship, primarily looking at um, what they look for, which um, Kevin touched on, but also thinking about it from a place of when you're applying with the hope of being considered for the scholarship, what are the things that you need to think about uh, that you need to have? But also when you start writing your personal statement, what's the best way to, it's not just a personal statement that sells to AFOX, but also because AFOX comes after your admission into a program, it's thinking about how does my personal statement uh, work or convince the people that I'm applying into to consider me. So I will do my best to cover um, those areas. And I think the, the first thing I had a conversation with someone and they're actually an AFOX scholar that finished the program and asked them like, why, why do you think AFOX actually accepted you into the program? Um, because I also trying to get a sense, a sense of like what the different scholars um, think is what stood out for them that could be helpful for someone else. And I think one of the biggest things that they spoke about was impact and leadership. And that's the one thing I want to emphasize today, because a lot of those people that apply to this postgraduate program is already doing exceptional work. And I think sometimes the struggle is in understanding how you can communicate your work from a place of impact and leadership, because that's what is being looked for, not just by AFOX, but also Oxford University. They are trying to invest in people that are going to be leaders within their sectors, within their communities. So you need to think about yourself as a leader and begin to think about what have I been doing? And in what ways does it, does it reflect a sense of leadership? But also looking at the work that I've been doing, in what ways does it show impact um, in my community, in the country, um, and also just impact that could be you know, useful for the continent as a whole. So I think the first thing you need to think about when you start thinking about applying to Oxford is leadership. Let that come out strong. And that's why I think in most of the applications, they actually encourage you to be as, you know, like, like you can go as far as you want in terms of telling us who you really are. You're not just telling them, I'm a daughter, I'm from Zim, but you're, you're locating yourself as a leader because once we see that, it means we're investing a leader that's going to go back and also then pass that on to other people. So we're not just investing in an individual. So think about leadership and think about impact. Um, I think one of the other things as you think about leadership and impact that I always keep in mind is that... Um, I know I'm phenomenal as a young person. I know I do great things, but there are so many other phenomenal young people in the world. And it's even crazier when you're applying for your program. There are so many other people that are as good as you are that are going to be applying. So what's going to set you apart is thinking about how you can show a sense of I lead in this way, I adapt in this way, I innovate in this way. This is the kind of impact I've had. So even if there are 10 people with the same degree that went to the same school that have the same distinction, this is what I've brought to the table that makes me different from those people. So you always want to think about in a pool of exceptional people, what could still make you exceptional. Um, and then the other thing that is very important for our folks um, is thinking about your passion for, sorry, it's thinking about your passion for the continent. I think one of the things that Afox does very well is to center Africa within the Oxford ecosystem, but also because ultimately it centers Africa in a global landscape. So you want to think about showing your passion for the continent through the work that you're doing. So you're not just telling us the ways that you've led. You're not just telling us the impact that you're having. It's also thinking about impact as it relates to the continent and its passion that you have in the current things that you're doing, but also relating it to how your program that you're applying into, you know, allows you to expand on that passion, whether it's um, you're trying to expand your knowledge, you're trying to, you know, get into a new space, whatever it is. The idea is to show that the program that you're applying for allows you to continue in growth in expressing that passion for the continent. So it has to really show. And tied to that passion as well, it's you being able to reflect your vision for the continent. Because I think when you're applying for, I will talk a lot about the personal statement and so on, but I think in talking about this, it kind of hints into it. But when you start to communicate why you want to do that program, you need to send out in the vision that you have for the continent. I'll give you an example of myself. Um, when I was applying, I was applying for a Master of Science in African Studies. And before that, I'd always been working in the human rights space in my country and the region. So one of the things I was doing is basically highlighting the work I was doing in human rights um, development work and why I felt like this African Studies program 
actually helps me to continue doing that work or do it better. And one of the biggest things I was highlighting, for instance, is the potential of the program to refine my analytical skills and help me be a better researcher because once I'm better at research and evidence for change in the community, it means I'll be able in an NGO setup to be able to design better programs that are more, you know, evidence based and things like that. So that was me for my work. For yourself, think about it the same way to say, this is what I'm doing right now. If I do this particular program, this is how it betters the work that I'm doing, or this is how it equips me for the next level of my growth if I'm trying to tap into a new space or expand. So you need to think about your long term goal and look at this degree as a pathway. Don't apply for the degree as I don't know, as if it's like an, an arrival. You don't arrive by getting the degree because I have the degree now, but it doesn't stop here. It's a conversation about how this degree allows me to continue to be the person I've been in the community, but to do better with a bigger network, with a, because coming to Oxford expands yourself um, outside of that network that you already have. And um, speaking of that again, before we get into the personal statement, is the choice of the program. I think um, one of the things that Kevin really mentioned a lot was the idea of don't do things because everybody else is doing it. I think it's a very dangerous thing, even in our personal lives, to say you can't do things because someone else is doing it. Our journeys are different, right? So whenever you choose a program, you need to choose something that is relevant to you. And one of the best ways to do it is to, um, for instance, look at what you've been studying or what you've worked on and actually go online and ask people what kind of programs would be ideal for this kind of you know, path that you've been on. And I, I love the fact that online, there are people that have already done blogs that actually compare programs, programs at Oxford, programs in other universities in the UK and things like that. So if you do that, what it will do is it will help you see outside of what you would ordinarily um, know for yourself. So challenge yourself to go online, do extensive research, take what programs the University of Oxford has. One of the good things about the university is They've got extensive details on each of their programs. They define what the program is, what modules it covers, the requirements, and also what people that have done the program have actually gone on to do. So you can actually take out some of the, like, the alumni that have done similar programs. So when you think about a program, don't just think because I did this particular program, then I should do a master's with the exact same name. Just look at what works. And then with the programs as well, look at the modules to see if they actually resonate with you because it might be a great name, but the modules might not make sense. The reason why it's very important for you to be thorough in the way that you search for the program is because when you start writing a personal statement, like I said earlier, and start highlighting its relevance to your journey, it needs to tidy. So I would say do that. And then um, as much as possible, you can reach out to other people and ask them what programs they're doing. Or if you already found a program that you like, you can actually ask someone that's just done it and check what the experience was what the requirements were and see if they're fit for that program. It's a great way to actually make sure you get the right thing and when you apply, also also can see like these relevance to your journey. Otherwise, if you just apply for a program, you might actually not stand out in it. And then into the last part of my submission, the personal statement itself. Uh, one of the things that someone recommended, um, they are also in AFOX alumni. One of the things that they recommended people to remember when they're writing their personal statement is to use the STAR method. So STAR is an, act, is, a, is an acronym, and what it does, it allows you to think about your writing from a place of what was the situation, what was the task, what was the action, and the results. So in that format, it already allows you to contextualize, you know, the kind of situations or problems that you've showed up for in leadership to solve. So it shows the situations, what you actually did, and some of the results. So it's doing what we said earlier, showing leadership, showing impact, and also just showing your passion. So it's something that you can think about. But um, the second thing that you need to remember as you craft your personal statement is, like I've already been emphasizing, position your masters in what you're already doing. So in the way that you write your personal statement, you come in and tell us where you are. I think for programs that allow you to you know, write your CV, you don't have to repeat what's on your CV because I think that's kind of boring. You're basically coming in and say, I am undoubtedly very passionate about ABCD and this is what I've done uh, in, a, in kind of like, exploring that passion and this is a kind of result that it has in the community i'm choosing to do this master's program because one it promises or it offers through this module a b c d but also there are people within the the, the department that are going to be our lecturers and whatever that are specialists in a b c d and i feel like actually learning through this person might be able to or it gives me you know opportunity to be mentored by a b c d so it's like you're showing a sense of knowledge of the program and that you've actually read what it covers, the modules, 
and that they're relevant to you, but you're also showing that the people within the program are people that are experts in the field you're in or you're passionate about. So there's a sense of relevance, like it's a program that makes sense for you. So make sure that you engage the course description, the module description, don't write word for word. I think that'd be annoying, but the point is to an understanding of how a certain, pro, um, a certain module can help you. And I'll just use my example because I remember when I applied for for my program, it's been a while, <laughs> but when I applied for my program, one of the modules that was there for my program was to do with like um, the strategies and methodologies for researching Africa. And one of the things I emphasized earlier was that I'm trying to get more refined critical analysis research skills. So what I was basically telling them was the fact that um, this particular module builds on a historical context of Africa over the years and then helps us to begin to think about, you know, Africa in a certain way, things like gender, you know, things like that. I actually highlighted that because I've been passionate about gender and this module particularly emphasizes those things. So I think it was one of those things that actually helped to make sure like this person knows what they're getting into. And because my program is nine months, it shows someone that we're not going to spend nine months trying to teach them, you know, help them find their space in the program. So I would recommend that you thoroughly engage with, you know, the course description, the program description and the people that are there. Um, and also the other thing I know that not everyone comes into a degree that's specifically what they've been doing. For some people, they're pivoting. They're trying to get into new spaces. So on that one, if you don't have enough in your journey to show a connection, one of the best ways to think about it would be kind of like validating your choice to pivot. So you can actually still talk about where you're coming from and then give a case for why you're pivoting. And then when you're engaging the program description, you're talking about these different modules or the expertise of these different individuals is the skills and the tools that you need to actually pivot into this new space that you're getting into. So emphasize that. And obviously in the personal statements as well, we want to know why you're choosing Oxford because there's so many amazing universities, including in the continent, you know, because just as an example, my program, I think the, the one of the best universities that offers it is Makerere University. So there's that conversation of why not, you know, Makerere, you know, and I only discovered this when I was like halfway in the program. But the point is to say there are, there are programs offered in universities outside of Oxford. So there's that question of why are you choosing Oxford? So you need to really have a strong reason for that, because I think everyone's going to be asked and they're going to be saying, the same thing you know it's one of the best universities in the world but we get that but what's the value of it being the best university or one of the best universities in the world so think about your why for oxford it's different from all of us and you need to be authentic to your why don't just give us you know generic um, responses tell us why you feel like oxford is the place you want to go for and you can also talk about um the, the other advice that someone gave is don't exaggerate. I think it's very important. I know we're all trying to look like we're the biggest thing in the world and that we're about to you know, do, do great things, but be very practical. One of the reasons why they were just recommending for people to not exaggerate is because there's certain things that look practical. You can't say, um, I'm coming to do this degree and after this, you're setting up a research center that's going to employ a thousand people. We see the ambition, we love the ambition, but it doesn't make sense in the practical way, right? So think about um, ensuring that what you're communicating is your vision and the things you're trying to do are very practical. So if you're planning to establish a center for research, it can be like a long term vision and saying like this program in the meantime allows me to do A, B, C, D that sets me on this pathway in order that in the next couple of years I'll be able to you know, fund base or get the kind of support that allows me to set up an institution like this. And also um, the last thing in communicating our vision especially for the long term goals. If you told me you're going to establish something in the next 10 years, I need to see what in your journey makes you someone that can actually do that. So that's the other thing that you want to show yourself as someone that actually can establish something like that and actually make a difference in that way. So I think those are the things that I decided to um, share with you guys, and I hope that they are very useful to you. But I think uh, the last thing I would say as I close is um, in the habit of researching. I think a lot of people are lazy, and I say this even to my friends. People are very lazy, and you might be guilty of that as well. People will ask you a question that you can actually find a response for online. It's like someone ask, asking um, Kevin about Afox, right? And it's stuff that you're on the website. So one of the best things that you can ever do for yourself is have a culture of researching. Go online, read what is already there, and then if you don't find anything, 
or you feel confused about something when you reach out to someone and like I was checking this out and I realized that they say ABCD but I don't understand that can you explain it to me so when you have yeah. a sense of um research and you know someone that actually takes initiative people respect that people are willing to help people like that I'm one of those people if you come and ask me a question that for me is silly because it's out there or I've said it already one of the ways that I will respond to you because I'm also nice I'm trying to you know be nice but I will always ask you did you read right or I might actually not respond to you so when you come to people, people want to help people that show a sense of commitment to what they're trying to do. So make sure you're not the person that's too lazy, but all the best, everyone. I hope that you apply to the university that you want to go to, Oxford included, and I hope you get in. Thank you so much, Mantasha. Thank you so much. I, I hope, you know, everyone has picked one or two things from this. I have tried to summarize a few, um, actually most of the things that Mantati has shared on the chats. Uh, if you have a question for Mantate, please raise your hand or just type it in the chat box and then we'll pick it up. We still have a few more minutes um, so we can take a few questions. So Delina is asking, do you think we should omit some projects from the CV so we can write about them in the personal statement to avoid repetition? Uh, can, I, can I respond to that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so remember what I said about the program. Some programs actually ask you to upload a CV, then some don't. Um, so I remember like there's some programs that last year were actually asking you to upload a CV, but I think they realized people were uploading very irrelevant stuff in their CVs. So what they ended up doing is um, they actually created sections on the application where you put your professional experience, uh, voluntary, ex it's professional experience, research experience, um, and I can remember the other thing, like awards and stuff. So depending on the program requirements, you may or may not be asked to put a CV. So if you're not asked for a CV and in the sections that they provide, I know like for the one I was checking out, they have a limit to the number of words that you use when you're describing. So if you've got that and you put in your employment history and you put in what you were doing or your, your role in it, you don't get an opportunity to show the impact of that work. So what you do in the personal statement, even though you've written in that one line is, for instance, um, I'll give you an example. I used to be a program lead for a program called Arts for Change in Zimbabwe before I came to the UK, right? So I would have put in the description, um, I work for this organization as program lead for this program. And then in the description, I basically talk about of, um, overseeing the project design management, blah, 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 of that program. That's the description of what I was doing, right? When I write my personal statement, what I basically come in to do, because I've talked about my commitment to women and young people participating in governance processes in my country, I basically can indicate that through my work at this particular organization, I have the opportunity to, you know, oversee the production of this number of films that we're spotlighting human rights issues. You get I me? Mean? Like, I'm showing that I was in the work, but I'm looking at the impact in that work. So you can still have that. And then if you're asked for a CV, normally it depends on how you format your CV. Um, if you have your CV with the title, what you did and impact, that's how my CV looks in real life. So it's like what I was doing in which organization and for how long. And then it says in, a, in one sentence what I was doing there. And then there's a bullet for the impact in that role. So if you already yeah. have that in your CV and you apply, you are uploading your CV, you don't have to emphasize. But the point of a, of a, a personal statement is basically you connecting who you are to the program that you're trying to do and to the future you're trying to grow into. So you don't yeah. have to repeat things. You're just showing in what ways you've been this person that is relevant to this program that will help yeah. you get into the future. So think about it that way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I won't add anything to that because I think you've highlighted everything. Um, so I see no questions on the chat and I also don't see any hands raised. So I assume everyone is, you know, sort of like uh, set for in case they are interested applying for the MasterCard or Fox scholarships. But I think this information is also useful, like Mantate mentioned, for other scholarships or other schools that you might be interested in applying for. So please use uh, the information. A lot of times we say don't put your eggs in one basket. So also try to explore other schools as well. Um, and I hope that this information is useful for that. And before I let you go, Mantate, I think it will also be unfair 
if I don't, uh, you know, um, ask you to highlight your personal experience, having gone through the MasterCard AFOX uh, scholarship, you know, just tell us a bit about your experience so that those that haven't joined or those that are looking to join can get a feel of what, you know, they could potentially get if they are part of this, um, this scholarship. Yeah, uh, I think the first thing I'd say is you need to be ready for this life because it can be a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I think the biggest thing is coming in with a commitment to the work. Um, I think it goes back to what I said earlier about choosing a program that makes sense, because as you go through this academic experience, you will consistently feel, you know, the passion to keep moving, even when it's very difficult, right? So that's the first thing, commit to something that you know you can, you know, do throughout. I think one of my favorite things about the Oxford experience has been the people. I think that's one thing I've always been saying, even within the Oxford, um, the AFOX community, my favorite thing was the cohort. You know, I met people from different countries who are phenomenal because Oxford is a place where everyone is like, phenomenal in different ways, right? And I think for the first time, I was in a nine year long process where it didn't feel like I was competing with anyone. No one was competing with me. We're in a space where all of us were growing and we are viable to support each other in different ways. We were close with others, not too close with other people, but it was one of those things when you meet them in the street, you know, they are your people. So I think for me, that was the, the biggest win, the community, because beyond, um, my program. It's still people that I'm thinking about how do I collaborate with you in my project or how do we work together in your country. So it's thinking about the community that you get. And I think of Oxford degrees, especially the short ones, are designed that way. They're designed mm. for you to come in and not just get the degree, but get the network that then allows you to continue in growth, right? And then the second mm. thing is um on an AFOX part, uh, I think we're really taken care of. I think one of the best things about the AFOX scholarship for me was understanding that it wasn't just tuition that they were paying for me because you know I think there are some scholarships in a said way that only pay for your tuition and your flight to the UK and that's kind of each and they hope you finish the program. I think one of the things that AFOX has been doing very well is to show up for the different aspects of the student and I think for me that was very very important because something happened to me um, during the process that really broke my heart and I struggled a lot in one of the you know when it started but I think the support that I received from the AFOX community in ensuring that throughout the process I was taken care of. So it's that idea of support beyond the money that you don't always get in other institutions. And the last thing, obviously, um, getting an Oxford degree is like dope, guys. I will not fly. I remember one of the things that we always talk about is when you send someone an email with your Oxford account, they respond faster, which is crazy because I'm like, you know, it's still my name. So it's this idea of it gives you access to certain spaces that you wouldn't have. And I think it's an unfair thing in the universe to say there are students who are going to other institutions in different parts of the continent as an example who will email the same person and not get the kind of response. But I think in that unfairness as well, it's this idea of when you're here, understand the power of that email address, understand the power of that um, degree. And even now when I'm done, I, my, my, my email, I think, expires in a few days. I won't have access from the 1st of October. But it's this idea of when you get to spaces and tell people I did an MSc African Studies at Oxford University, people stop because it's not just the institution, it's the culture, the way that we learn, the way that we're taught, that gives them the confidence that they can work with you. So I think it's not just Oxford. As you think about the different things that you're doing, understand the authority of the space that you're occupying and use that to your advantage, it will take you far. Yeah. I cannot say it any better than Mantati has put it. <laughs> so there you have it. I don't know what you're waiting for. So in case you're interested in you know, applying for a master, a master's scholarship, you know what to do. You know, we've, we've tried to tell you or to give you all that we can from our perspective. Now it's up to you. You know, you have to put in the work and put forth that application. And I think before we end, I'll just, you know, re-emphasize, uh, you know, just appreciating Afox and giving them their flowers. I mean, Kevin, on behalf of Afox, <laughs> 
um just you know to just say thank you to you and the team uh, as you can see you know your the scholars that you've taken in the kind of work that they are doing the kind of impact that they have and to appreciate you for you know uh and talks about watering us on the path that we are on so you know to appreciate that you know the efforts that you guys are putting in to trust and believe in african scholars and you know uh you know just giving them the seed and you know, take them further. So you see people like Mantate, Anita, you know, Ruth, uh, you know, the, the career, the path that they are for, forging forward, you know, it boils back to what Afox did or the seed that Afox planted. So just to say thank you to you and the whole team uh, at Afox here. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Kevin, I thought you were gonna speak. <laughs> No, I just can say I can say thanks and also a great talk from Mantate. Really enjoyed it. But lovely to be here with you all today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and thank you so much, Mantate, as well. You know, I think, you know, you're 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 one of the you know I don't want to say few people, but you're one of the best people that I've met in Oxford, and I also. You know, I love all the initiatives that you do. If you are yet to follow Mantati, <laughs> please follow her on all her socials. She just she does amazing work for the continent as well in the humanitarian spaces. And also, I would like to thank my team. I think we have Anita here and Nehemiah as well for all the work that they put uh, in to ensure that you know we can bring these sessions to life for you guys. So thank you so much, Anita Nehemiah and Cynthia as well. And thank you everyone for also joining. I don't think we would have an MSJ session if we didn't have an audience. So <laughs> thank you also to everyone that has joined for today's session. And I hope that you picked one, two, three things from this session. And we will see you on the next MSJ webinar session in two weeks time. So bye-bye everyone, see you.